All right, good afternoon everyone. My name is Emeline Aumont. I'm a senior training producer at Informa. I'm delighted to welcome you today on this webinar which will be delivered to you by James Graham. To deliver the, the webinar will be on implementing strategies, how to ensure success. Before we start, I wanted to take you through a few housekeeping rules that we will follow um, during the next half an hour. First of all, um, please uh, note that all your questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type them in the question box and James will answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. If we do not have time to go through all the questions, then all the questions will be answered on our blog and will be all the questions will and answers will be sent to you by emails after the after the webinar as well. The slides will be available on SlideShare. I will be sending you the link uh, once the webinar is over, as well as the recording of the webinar. You will have access to it after, after we are done today. Um, once we finish the webinar, you will have the opportunity to complete a post-webinar survey. I really encourage you to, to take the time to complete that survey. That will be very helpful to us. All right, that's it. I'm going to hand over the mic to James. And I hope you enjoyed the session. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is James Graham. It's a real pleasure to be with you this afternoon for this session on how to implement strategies successfully. As my colleague Emmeline just said to you, if you have any questions uh, that you wish to ask, don't hesitate to type them into the uh, instant messaging box on the software and uh, we'll either deal with those at the end or if there are too many for the time uh, uh, to permit, we will actually then um, answer those and put them on our blog afterwards. So just uh, a short introduction to let you know a little bit about myself and my background. You see on the map of the world, I've been fortunate enough to work in uh, multinational roles. I have experience in over 40 different countries. I'm based in a small island called Malta in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And I travel around the world, the Middle East, Far East, um, Africa and uh, North America, running seminars and also doing management consulting work. I started off in the textiles industry, uh, selling acrylic and nylon fibers around Europe and North Africa and then I moved into a, a national uh, sales management role with a public company in the UK and I sat on the uh, the marketing strategy committee there. And in 1993 I moved into strategic consulting particularly specializing in transformational management and I started uh, also doing learning and development seminars in uh, around about 2002. My real experience is strategic execution and strategic execution means assembling strategies that work, leading people in the right way and making sure your processes are fit for purpose. So let's uh, start off this afternoon by uh, looking at four reasons why uh, strategies fail. By getting this insight, we can hopefully make sure that we don't make fall into any of these traps and make our strategies more successful. The first reason is very often that uh, strategic planning is done uh, poorly. Poor planning basically guarantees poor execution. And when I'm talking about uh, poor strategic planning. I'm not necessarily uh, talking about uh, the fact that people don't do strategic planning. That you know, obviously could be a problem. But equally, sometimes people try and do too much planning too early. And they commit themselves to strategies that are not realistic. And by the time they've realized they're not realistic, they're too far uh, down the road of executing them to be able to change. So my first bit of advice to anybody uh, on the call today is when you're planning strategy, think uh, very, very carefully about how stable your environment is, how uh, many competitors you have, what your marketing position is, how likely that is to change, whether you may get new entrants or new products coming in. Make sure that your planning is flexible, enough detail to allow you to execute, but uh, 
also light enough to allow you to uh, be agile and where necessary change that strategy. The second part is what I call non-inclusive planning. What I mean by that is that the strategic planners sit in a, a small office, um, in head office or certainly away from where most of the people in the organization are. And they do very intellectually clever, very deep, very rigorous planning. They don't involve their colleagues who ultimately will have to make that strategy work in testing the realism and the assumptions about the planning. As a result, people in the organization tend to feel that they don't uh, uh, really buy in or feel engaged into the plans that are being produced and therefore you don't get the full commitment that you may expect when it comes around to rolling those plans out. So my second piece of advice today is make sure that when you uh, do strategic planning, you certainly do stakeholder management, you identify people whose advice and engagement is required and that you involve them in the planning as soon as possible. It pays dividends later on. The third part, and this is a really difficult one because we, we all have challenges on this, is lack of data analysis. We call it wandering around in the fog. You're not quite sure of what's happening on either side or in front or behind. Uh, at the same time, it's not always easy to get timely data in the, uh, this sort of modern fast world. Some organizations are, are going private so that they don't have to release public information until the last minute. And, uh, and equally, depending on the strategic window of your organization, by the time uh, you've been able to gather information from uh, stock market reports, company reports, and other sort of classic forms of, of data, those well uh, may well be out of date and of limited use. So therefore, once again, uh, when planning, my third piece of advice is think very, very carefully about what data you need. Think very carefully about what data is available and make sure that you have the sufficient data uh, to at least give you um, some clearing in the fog so that you can see where you're going. And finally, lack of alignment. Uh, very often as a consultant, I've seen organizations roll out a new strategy. For example, they decide we're going to become the uh, best provider of high quality products with excellent customer service. And that's fine. That's a very good position to take in the market. Unfortunately, at the same time, uh, the CFO or someone else in the finance function may decide it's equally important to have a cost reduction exercise to make sure that the financials are good and that the analysts from the big investment companies are happy with those. While both those strategic initiatives are valid and um, in fact could work together if aligned, very often they're not aligned and therefore this leaves, leads to confusion, uh, inconsistent decision making and uh, ultimately threatens uh, strategic success. So my final piece of advice on this slide is make sure that when you're planning strategy that you work together with all of the other main stakeholders and that you get alignment so that all of the strategic decisions and planning decisions that are made are pointing in the same direction. So what typical kind of planning faults do we see when we're working as consultants? Very often, uh, people jump straight into the planning and execution process because uh, human nature means that we want to start feeling we're doing things. Normally good practice in, in any kind of leadership role, and strategic leadership is uh, no different, means that people have to understand at a fairly high level uh, of detail about why you're doing what you're doing and where you're going and that can be in the form of a mission that tells people what uh, your organization ethos is and the mission doesn't have to be very detailed, but it could be, for example, be something as we're here to provide the best service in the car distribution business to our customers. That will help uh, people down at all levels understand what uh, decisions they need to make and it will lead to better alignment. Situational awareness uh, lacking within an organization or lip service. In other words, um, people do the wrong type of planning for the environment either because they're not aware of the environment itself, which often comes from not having enough data, or they're paying lip service to very senior executives because they're concerned about challenging them and saying, well, we don't think your, uh, your views are realistic. Obviously, 
uh, challenging senior executives has to be done very carefully, but it ne needs to be done, otherwise people may make wrong decisions. Over optimistic thinking, yes, we should be optimistic, we should think that we're uh, going to achieve uh, great outputs, but equally, being over optimistic and discounting the risks in the market and uh, other threats is not helpful. So make sure that our thinking is optimistic, but also balanced by realism. Having a poorly defined planning process may mean that important information isn't gathered and uh, isn't included. It can lead to gaps in the plan and, and again that is a classic cause of poor execution. Over complex thinking, never, never make things more complicated than they need to be. Strategy in essence is a, is a simple game. It's not easy to do but it means uh, basically understanding who your competitors are understanding what their strengths and weaknesses are, understanding your strengths and weaknesses, and then finding a way to make sure that you win superiority in the market. That may mean uh, all-out struggle, or it may mean taking a very clever differentiated niche position, such as uh, Cirque du Soleil, who uh, compete with other people in the entertainment business, but sit in a little niche that is uh, very, very different to anyone else's. So keep it simple, keep it uh, clear, and that will be a big benefit. Inflexible plans have already mentioned, but they are still um, a planning fault. We need flexibility because the market uh, will uh, potentially move very quickly. Underestimating execution challenges is also a typical mistake. I mean, sometimes getting people to learn new skills, getting people to become familiar with new products or services or procedures, policies, uh, that can be um, a lot harder than people think. People often resist change because they're frightened of it or they don't understand how to do it. So never underestimate challenge and start planning your uh, change management early in the strategy. It will pay big uh, dividends at the end. Sometimes strategy is also seen as a technical discipline. Well, my view has always been it's, it is a technical discipline. There are some tools that need to be mastered. But equally, it's about getting people to buy in and feel good and trying that extra effort to make sure that strategies work. So we need a, an integrated view where leadership skills and management skills work together and balanced um, strategic planning and balanced leadership planning, in my experience, is much more effective than having just a technical approach. And uh, we often, we talk about lessons learned, but no doubt, no matter how much information is gathered by organizations, we see repetitive mistakes where the same things are done time and time again. Um, you know, use the opportunity with your lessons learned to try and genuinely uh, change the way you think about situations and, and where necessary, where things go well, analyze the reasons why and try and do more of that. And where they go badly wrong, analyze that and try and avoid it. It's just common sense and we can make uh, a lot more. As uh, Professor Rita McGrath of Columbia University says, you've paid the tuition in the form of investing in the strategy. You might as well learn the lessons from it. Now some antidotes to um, poor planning. Make it exclusive. Set top-down goals. Set people in the right direction. Give them the big picture. Tell them what you expect of them. But then trust the people at the lower levels to plan the detail. That's a great way of getting engagement. But equally, it's a great way of getting the people who are closest to the customer to get involved in the, uh, the business planning and strategy planning and getting better outputs. When you get feedback and you don't like it, it's very, very natural to dismiss it or try and rationalize it oh, it went wrong because the value of the uh, euro changed against the dollar or, you know, whatever reason. Don't rationalize it. Sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes you're ahead of your time. Accept it, but do learn the lessons and, and um, amend your planning. Very important in the market, who needs your company? If your company was no longer in the market tomorrow, who would miss you? Why would they miss you? Um, how can you build on that strength? This is a very, very valuable piece of understanding about your true market position. Once you understand that position, de develop a targeted proposition. Show people where the value is, show how it aligns with what they need, and, and that will help your strategy succeed where others fail. I keep the message um, simple. 
An old CI, uh, CEO I used to work with many years ago, a very, very uh, wise CEO, used to say, if you can't describe your strategy in more than four or five sentences, it's too complex, rethink it. I've always found that to be absolutely excellent advice. And be relentless, never give in. There are setbacks, the, uh, the road to perfection is always under construction and it's a bumpy road at times, but keep doing the right things, keep the energy levels high. This is really important in implementing strategy. So planning inclusively is very much about partnership and collaboration. Uh, you set the targets, you get the people involved, try and think of them as partners, collaborate. It's a win-win and uh, it works. When you're dealing with strategy as well, try and look for facts. We uh, all suffer from a thing called cognitive bias where we put our own interpretation on the world around us. There are a number of proven analysis uh, frameworks that inform We have a number of very, very good seminars with different speakers including topics such as Balanced Business Scorecard. I do a, a generic program on strategic thinking and planning. Make sure that you have the right frameworks and make sure you know how to collect data. We also do uh, several data analysis courses to help with that. And make sure that when you uh, do make your strategies, it's based on facts and it's very, very clear and it has recommendations that everybody can buy into. Again, try and promote alignment. Policies are very important in aligning strategies. You can make whatever decisions you want, but the policies and processes and procedures are the things that guide people in making day-to-day -day decisions in alignment with what you want them to do. So when you're looking at people's behavior, make sure that you, reside, you, you reward desired behaviors such as compliance with policies and procedures. And when people don't follow them, sanction them. That means... Um, get the person to explain why they didn't follow the process, policy or procedure, and then reinforce that you need them to do this in the future. So in summary, when you're looking at strategic planning and implementing strategy, uh, firstly you need to plan effectively, you include the right people around the table, collect the relevant data, and plan alignment in both uh, planning and doing. In other words, join up your strategic thinking and planning. So, at this stage, I hope you found this uh, discussion useful. I would be uh, very happy to uh, take any questions now that anybody uh, would like to ask. So, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the first question is, um, are the classic strategic tools still valid in a world that moves uh, very quickly? That's a great question, and thank you for, uh, for raising that. I believe, yes, they are, but to some degree, we need to also be very flexible in our thinking. There are times when a five forces analysis will force you very, very rigorously to understand the, in, the market environment, understand who the key players are, both buyers and sellers, and the rivalry amongst firms, as well as driving you to look for new entrants and substitute products. But uh, at other times, you may have to move more quickly and you ha may have to use more agile approaches to gather information um, as you go along. So the answer is yes, the classic tools are still valid, but they're only, uh, only part of the picture and uh, you should also try and have more agile, flexible tools. Right, we have a, another question. What's the, what's the largest or biggest challenge for strategic leaders in the 2010s. I think the, uh, the biggest challenge is balancing the short term versus the long term. You have to do the right thing in the long term to have a, a viable strategy, but equally you have short term performance targets. Uh, you've got external analysts and other people who will be looking at your company performance and uh, expecting you to deliver against uh, targets that may be as short as three months. So getting the, the right balance between the long-term perspective, the short-term perspective, and uh, balancing that for me is uh, the largest challenge. And finally, I think we, uh, we have uh, one more um, question. 
which is uh, how best do you recommend cultural issues to be tackled in addition to competencies? And that's a really, really, um, really, really good question. There's a saying within uh, strategic circles that culture eats strategy. And uh, what that means is that uh, the, the strategy has got to be in alignment with the cultural um, uh, aspects, attributes of your organization. It's another form of alignment. So I believe the best way to, to tackle that is to involve the people at all levels, uh, join the organization in sharing the vision, the missions, as much as possible get people involved in shaping the detail work. That in a way will um, drive um, those cultural issues uh, in the right way and that will help you align those with, uh, with the competencies. So thanks for that, that was a great question. I think we have time uh, maybe just for another question as well. So the, um, the final question today is, um, is policy development vital? If so, why? Uh, as I was saying a couple of minutes ago in the um, slide presentation, if you interview most CEOs or senior um, VPs or other people from large corporations, they'll say to you that they don't have as much power as you may expect. Yes, they can decide who they want on the board of directors. They can make major policy decisions and, and uh, create strategies. But as one of them once said to me, I can't sit... Uh, behind every employee in my 40,000 uh, employee organization and ensure that they always do the, uh, the right thing. I've got to trust them. And my way of doing that is to make sure that we have uh, very clear policies that we can send people out, that we can explain to people, that help people to understand when they're faced with an awkward decision about the right uh, choice to make. So that's why policies and equally procedures which uh, are used to help people go through the mechanics of implementing the policy, that's where they're vital. And they're a vital part to both strategic formulation and uh, execution. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming along to the, uh, the webinar. On behalf of uh, Emily and myself, we hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please go on to our uh, blog and, and lodge them on there or email them in. We'd be very, very happy to respond to you. So wishing everybody, uh, inshallah, a very, very nice weekend. Thank you for coming along and uh, goodbye.